the most important thing to this hospitalist model is communication. It's really, I view it as, as a team. You know, uh, I agree that medicine was much simpler uh, 60 or 70 years ago. There were no such things as ICU. There were no such things as emergency departments. There were no such things as rehabs. There were primary care doctors and there were patients. But what would happen was that patient would show up in the emergency department and a nurse there would call the primary care doctor and say, what do you want us to do with your patient? And somebody figured out along the way that it might make sense to put a doctor there all the time in the emergency department uh, for more timely care for patients. And that's how the field of emergency department uh, medicine uh, came about. And in the 60s, you know, there was a lot of data suggesting that if we cohort patients in the ICU, that we could actually provide better care for patients. And I think that we're seeing this evolution in terms of um, site-based care, in terms of hospital medicine. You will never hear me say that um, hospital medicine as a field is perfect, because it's far from perfect. I think much like emergency medicine or intensive care medicine, we figure out what are the potential advantages and disadvantages. Certainly one of the potential advantages is having that doctor there 24 hours a day. Certainly one of the disadvantages is the fact that uh, the primary care doctor is not with the patient in the hospital all the time. But what I really feel like that if we do it well and if there's tight communication between the primary care doctor and the hospital team, I think that we can offer some real advantages to the care of these hospitalized patients. From a medical standpoint, um, the advantages in the smaller community hospitals was someone was there 24 seven. Uh, since we didn't have residents, um, you know, at two in the morning, the only person in the hospital was the emergency room doctor. And uh, most of us physicians had to go in and see your patients if they got sick. Um, the second advantage medically was that uh, if a hospitalist was doing only hospital medicine and nothing else, had no other distractions, you, you become pretty good at it um, and would be more up to date and would be very, very thorough. Um, that was called the residency argument. From an economic standpoint, and this is my understanding from the, from the t earlier times, the hospital administration standpoint, they would be a little more efficient in terms of uh, length of stay. And uh, since hospitals were reimbursed on the diagnosis-related uh, issues, uh, that might be a benefit to them. There was also, from an administrative standpoint, uh, an issue of control. Doctors who were employed by you, in theory, would be more predisposed to cooperate with QA issue measures, nursing administration initi initiatives, documentation and coding, and discharge planning. And that was important to the hospital administrations. Um, the medical downside, as I saw it, was that the uh, private attendings knew their physicians very well, and they had a better the patients very well, and they had a better relationship with them. The administrative downside, I felt, was that there was a loss of independent decision making and important hospital committees and issues. Now, my the reality of my experience was the following, and I'm going to put this in then and now, because it's evolved. In the initial part of my experience, and this was, I would say, 15 years ago when we first started, most of the hospitalists uh, had no particular training or experience uh, designed specifically for this specialty. In fact, it wasn't a specialty. And many of them were internal medicine residency graduates who were basically seeking employment for a few years before they could decide what they really wanted to do. And this is not my perspective. This is what they would tell me. Therefore, there was no continuity and no commitment to the hospital or the community. Um, the second downside was that graduating from a three-year residency program in internal medicine, most of the residents had the mindset of a resident, which is order everything, consult for everything. And it's true, and we all did that. And any advantage to the hospital economically from the decreased length of stay might be offset by all the excess lab x-rays and all this other stuff was ordered. Now, in all fairness, today, my hospital, which has evolved from that to a much more stable group, and we've had very little turnover, where in the beginning we had turnover all the time. Uh, that's not true now. Now we have a very stable group. They have a good relationship with the attendings, uh, or the primary care doctors, 
And, uh, and so that's changed considerably from what it was in the beginning. But it was a real evolutionary process. Um, the last thing I want to comment is that what I think are the advantages and or disadvantages to the primary care doctor of the hospitalist program. Um, advantages. Uh, number one, there are decreased hours. Uh, let's face it, I was, I gave up going to the hospital only last year. And at that point I was close to 85, 90 hours a week. Um, and it was just too much. Um, um, but less hours, don't have to go in in the middle of the night. More time to take care of your primary goal, which is do your primary care medicine in your office. From an economic standpoint, and this has been shown through other studies, you actually did better financially. It takes so long and so cumbersome to make rounds in the hospital, that the requirements are different than they were 20 years ago, that uh, you could do much better economically if you concentrated on outpatient medicine. Um, and your lifestyle, therefore, became much easier. You could make a little more money, you could actually go you know, spend less hours in the hospital, don't have to worry about nights, and your lifestyle was much easier. When you're on call now, and I can speak for myself, you know, when I was on call for a weekend for our group, we had four solo people working together, I would get 100 calls, easily, maybe more. And frequently I was in the hospital most of the time and often at night. Now, when I'm on call for the weekend, I get 10 calls, 11 calls, 12 calls, and never at night. So it's a big difference. That's the real advantage. Now, there are a couple of disadvantages. Um, and I wanted to speak to these, and then I'll be finished. Um, just one minute. <laughs> uh, I think there is some breakup in the continuity of care, and it's crucial, crucial to, keep, uh, to work on that part of it. And that, along with that line, uh, in the community hospitals, less, more so than in maybe the uh, academic centers. There's sometimes spotty and irregular communication between the hospitalists and the, attending and the primary care doctors. The two other things I want to talk briefly mention is, number three is the lack of academic stimulation that you get in the care of and discussions about your sickest patients in the hospital. I refer to it as the hockey syndrome, and that is when you're not constantly stimulated with the most difficult patients, you, your blades get dull. That's why I refer to the hockey syndrome. No mention of the Bruins. Um, and the second thing is distancing yourself from the stimulation of the hospital community and the interactions with colleagues is an issue too because the hospital is always the center point for all physicians. And that sort of puts us outside the ring of the hospital. Of medicine. I think hospitalists really do play an important role in provision of care to patients. I think with shorter lengths of stay, with the complexity of illness uh, that people have to have to be inpatients, and with all the demands on a primary care physician, I, I think there's a real value to the hospitalist model. There needs to be continuous work to coordinate and communicate, especially during transitions, and I think we're continuously working on that. I think that there may be a loss of continuity and authority by PCPs with the use of a hospitalist, but I don't think the hospitalist replaces the primary care physician, and I think ultimately the patient calls the PCP when they don't know what to do or when they have concerns. And I think that dovetails with this need for patients to understand the rationale and the role for the hospitalist and to maintain contact with the PCP as needed.